last time we have uh, defined the function e power or the exponential of the complex number x plus i y as uh, e raised to x. Now, this is the uh, usual uh, real exponential function e power x okay, times cosine y plus i sin y. That was our definition of the complex exponential function. So, I will write e x p of z. Okay, that was our definition for any, uh, for any complex number z. So, uh, from this we see that we can quickly see that uh, cosine of y okay, uh, is actually uh, e power i y okay, uh, plus e power minus i y by 2. Okay. So, just uh, to uh, put this really uh, clearly, uh, if you take x equals 0, you get e power i y equals cosine y plus i sin y. Okay. And from here, we can clearly see that cosine y can be recaptured by uh, taking uh, e power i y plus e power minus i y divided by 2. Okay. So, and likewise sin y can be recaptured uh, by uh, taking on the right hand side e power i y minus e power minus i y divided by 2 i though. Okay. And uh, so, taking uh, okay, notice that the left hand side of either of these equations okay, are the uh, real cosine and sine functions, they are, they are uh, functions of real numbers uh, y. Okay. So, owing to these two uh, uh, the, these two equations, we define the uh, cosine and sine functions for uh, a complex number z as follows. So, define cosine of a complex number z as, so the colon means that the left hand side is being defined, cosine z is defined as the exponential function of uh, i z plus e power minus i z by uh, 2 okay. and uh, sin of z, the sin of the complex number z is defined as e power i z minus e power minus i z by 2 i. Okay. So, at least this definition uh, makes sure that when we substitute a real number in place of the complex number z, then the older uh, definitions of the real and uh, the, the real cosine and sine are recaptured. Okay. So, uh, when z is a, a real number, you get, uh, uh, get back your uh, uh, sine and cosine, uh, which you already know from uh, real analysis. Okay. So, uh, that is your definition of the complex cosine and sine functions okay. and uh, o, owing to this you can actually define all the other uh, trigonometric uh, functions. Um, so, for example, tan z is uh, defined as the tangent z is defined as uh, sin z by cosine z etcetera. Okay. So, let us now at least look at these uh, functions cosine z and sin z and capture some of their properties. Okay. So, uh, properties which follow from this definition of cosine z and sin z are as follows. One uh, cosine of x okay, and uh, is equal to the real function. cosine x. Okay. So, the left hand side should really say cosine x plus i times 0. Okay. So, the uh, cosine of uh, complex number x plus i times 0 uh, tallies with the real function cosine x. This I have said verbally already. Okay. And likewise, uh, sine of x plus i times 0 is the real function. So, by the real function, I mean uh, that it is the uh, function of the real variable x, okay, which you uh, which you already are familiar with, uh, and uh, further properties are as follows: um, uh, two sine z and cosine z are 
entire functions. So, sin z and cosine z are entire functions because uh, let us look at the definition they are combinations of uh, entire functions uh, the exponential uh, functions e power i z and e power i minus i z. Okay. So, uh, so when you add uh, or subtract entire functions uh, you get uh, entire functions okay. and dividing by 2 will not uh, affect the analyticity of a function at a point. Okay. So, uh, or dividing by 2 i likewise. Okay. So, these are entire functions okay. and uh, the second uh, or the third property uh, is that well let me let me give you the derivative then the derivative of sin z uh, which we expect it to be cosine z is indeed cosine z because uh, the derivative of sin z is the derivative of e power i z minus e power minus i z by 2 i prime. Okay. So, since 2 i is a constant I will just uh, pull it out and the derivative of e power i z is i e power i z and the derivative of e power minus i z is uh, plus i e power minus i z. Okay. So, the derivative of e power minus i z is minus i e power minus i z then I multiply the minus in the front here. So, I get a plus e power plus i e power i z okay. and then uh, one cancels the i to notice that what you have is uh, cosine z. Okay. Likewise, one can compute that the derivative of cosine z is uh, minus sin Okay, so, it is actually the complex number minus 1 times uh, sin z okay, to be more precise. Well, uh, so, uh, those are the derivatives okay, and then the third of the properties is that uh, the sin of minus z is minus sin z. Okay. So, uh, many of the properties uh, we are familiar with of the sine and cosine uh, hold also for complex numbers. Okay. So, sine of uh, the complex number minus z okay, which is minus x minus i y when z is written as x plus i y is the is minus 1 times the sine of x plus i y okay. and likewise cosine of minus z will be cosine z. So, these tally with uh, the properties we are familiar with for functions of uh, real numbers, the uh, the sine and cosine functions of real numbers, okay. And then the usual trigonometric identities we are familiar uh, with from trigonometry also hold uh, for the complex sine and cosine functions. So, uh, for example. Okay, so, I will put that in quotes really. Uh, so, I will say sin squared z plus cosine squared z is equal to 1. Okay. So, here we are defining the sine function and the cosine function in terms of the exponential function. So, one can directly compute the left hand side okay, using those functions uh, using the exponential function and one can uh, uh, arrive at this equation 4. Okay. And uh, likewise, I will say that sin of z 1 plus z 2 the complex number z 1 plus z 2 is uh, sin z 1 cosine z 2 plus uh, cosine z 1 sin z 2. Okay. So, this is the identity familiar from trigonometry okay, and it holds for complex numbers as well. So, cosine z 1 plus z 2 now is cosine z 1 cosine z 2 minus sin z 1 sin z 2. Okay. So, the, the proofs or uh, the, the verification of these identities are exercises for the viewer. Okay. So, uh, please verify uh, any of these properties uh, that you suspect. Okay. And a careful student is suspicious. So, you 
might want to uh, suspect all these and verify them for yourself. Okay. Then uh, the other properties are as follows: sine of z plus two n pi okay, is indeed sine z, where uh, n is any integer. Okay, n is any integer. Okay. So, indeed the, the, the complex sin and cosine functions are also 2 pi periodic. Okay. So, cosine I will write that cosine z plus 2 n pi likewise is equal to cosine z for all z and, and n is an integer. Okay. So, uh, these are some properties okay. and uh, let me note couple others. Okay. So, sin of pi by 2 plus z is going to give you cosine z okay. and uh, this is also equal to sin pi by 2 minus z. Okay. So, that is the relation between the sin and the cosine uh, complex sin and cosine functions. Okay. And uh, so, the viewer once again is welcome to verify any of these uh, identities. Okay. So, uh, we have studied the mapping properties of the uh, complex exponential function okay. and likewise uh, the viewer is encouraged to uh, chalk out the mapping properties of uh, the sine and cosine functions of a complex number. Okay. So, uh, we already know the graph of a uh, sine function, uh, let me go back to the real case, the graph of a sine function okay, has a y value at most uh, 1 okay, and at least minus 1. So, by that I mean sin x, the function sin x is bounded by minus 1 and 1. Okay. So, uh, but you will notice that when we uh, go to the complex case, uh, the sine function or the cosine function are unbounded. By that I mean uh, any complex number is really in the image of the complex sine function or the complex cosine function. Okay. And uh, it is really interesting to see what the uh, images look like for, a, uh, for the sine function. Okay. So, uh, start with some contours and try to see if you can uh, find the images like we have done for the exponential function. Okay. So, uh, next I want to uh, I want to talk about uh, harmonic functions. Okay. So, this is a slight detour from uh, the mainstream sort of complex analysis, but it has a lot of uh, lot of uh, material which comes from complex analysis and it is an important application. So, I am going to uh, talk about harmonic functions uh, here which appear really in, in the in partial differential equations. Let phi of x y okay, be a function of two real variables. defined on a region d. Suppose that uh, the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, the partial derivative of uh, phi with respect to y, okay, the partial derivative of phi with respect to uh, or the partial of phi the second partial of phi with respect to uh, x and then again with respect to x and likewise the second partial of phi with respect to uh, y and then again with respect to y okay and of course phi itself are all continuous okay? so let us uh, make these assumptions okay the pde okay uh, phi x x of x y plus phi y y of x y. So, the partial 
differential equation this equals uh, 0 okay, is called the Laplace equation. Okay, so, this p d is called a Laplace equation okay, and um, so actually I should have uh, taken some other name because I have used phi maybe I will say this is psi plus psi y y of x y is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, a function if, if phi as above okay, satisfies Uh, the Laplace equation on the domain D. Okay, so for every point, uh, suppose that phi x x x, so i.e., phi x x rather of x y plus phi y y of x y is equal to zero for every x y belongs to D. Okay, uh, then phi is called a harmonic function. Okay, so such a function which satisfies this uh, Laplace equation is called a harmonic function. Okay, now. Uh, if a function, if, if we take a, the real part of uh, a complex analytic function, uh, it is true that due to the Cauchy Riemann equations, uh, it already satisfies uh, the, the Laplace equation. Okay? So, let us uh, say that in the following words. Uh, so, if f of z is an analytic function. Okay, uh, on a region D, defined on a region D and analytic on a region D. Okay, uh, and if f of x plus i y, so let allow me to write z as x plus i y. This is equal to u of x y plus i times v of x y. Okay, so I'm capturing the real and the imaginary parts of this function. Okay, then um, u of x y okay, and v of x y are harmonic functions. On D. Okay, so let's see why this is due to the uh, Cauchy-Riemann equations. Okay, so. Uh, f is uh, differentiable. So, um, f is of course, continuous and so it follows that u and v are continuous okay? and the partial of u with respect to x okay, is equal to. So, I will, I will uh, somehow suppress this of x y and say u x is v y okay? and v x is minus u y. So, uh, u okay, by C R equations okay. and C R equations say that uh, the partial of u with respect to x is equal to the partial of v with respect to y on all of d on all of the domain d okay. and likewise the other equation. Okay. So, I will differentiate partially with respect to x on both sides of uh, this equation and get u x x is v y x. Okay? And uh, for here I get u y y, I will differentiate partially with respect to y on the right hand side okay? and I get minus v x y. Okay? So, um, by partially differentiating both sides of above equations. 
okay, above equations one with respect to x and the other with respect to y I am not going to write that I will just say that verbally okay. and then uh, what we get is that uh, and this and this uh, holds uh, uh, on all of d. Okay. So, when we add u x x plus u y y okay, we get v y x plus minus v x y okay. and since v y x is v x y we get v x y minus v x y which gives us 0. Okay. And so, u satisfies the, um, the Laplace equation. Okay. So, if you are wondering why, uh, why v is differentiable, uh, why at all v or u is differentiable again with respect to x, how do I know that the partial derivatives exist or if you are wondering why the mixed partial v y x is equal to v x y, let me uh, state a fact which we are going to prove later that uh, an analytic function f okay, is differentiable any number of times. So, in particular if you take the real or the imaginary part of uh, an analytic function, then uh, all the partial uh, partial derivatives of all orders of u and v exist. Uh, so, in particular the second order partial uh, derivatives exist and are continuous which is enough to uh, say that the mixed partials v y x and uh, v x y are equal. Okay. And likewise, uh, it is uh, thus justified that uh, the mixed partials or rather the, the second order partials exist at all. Okay. Uh, that is due to the fact that uh, an analytic function is differentiable any number of times. Okay. And this for now please accept that as a fact, we will prove that later when we study uh, the integration theory. Okay. So, uh, so, now uh, owing to that fact we have that u satisfies uh, the, the Laplace equation. So, u of x y is a harmonic function. On D. Okay. Likewise, one can show it is an exercise uh, for the viewer uh, try to show um, v of x y uh, is also harmonic on d. Okay. So, um, let us uh, see the following. Okay. So, if u of x y is a harmonic function on D. On the domain D. Okay. And if we can find okay, another harmonic function v of x y such that uh, the uh, partial differentials of uh, u and v satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equations. then we say that uh, v is a harmonic conjugate of u. Okay. So, if we start with a harmonic function and if you are able to find a yet another harmonic function uh, such that u and v satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equations, then uh, we say that uh, v is a harmonic conjugate of u. Okay. So, uh, notice that there is a slight asymmetry in, in this uh, in this definition. Okay. So, the following exercise which I am going to assign to the viewer. Okay. Uh, 
okay uh, will bring out the asymmetry okay so actually before the exercise let me say that this implies that this definition implies that the function f of x plus i y defined as u of x y plus i times v of x y okay uh, is analytic on uh, the region d okay so if we take uh, f equals u plus i v, then uh, since we are assuming that um, the partials second order partials of u and v exist. So, the first order partials are continuous okay. and since u and v satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equations f equals u plus i v uh, is uh, indeed analytic on the region d. Okay. So, on this region d where u and v are uh, harmonic. Okay. So, uh, let me give an exercise which brings out the asymmetry in the statement. Okay. So, the exercise as follows uh, show that if u is a harmonic conjugate of v. So, here I mean u of x y and v of x y and suppressing uh, that of x y notation okay. and if v of x y is a harmonic conjugate of u of x y okay, on, on some domain d on a uh, region d then u and v okay then show that essentially u and v are both constants so constant functions on on all of d okay so i assume d is a region okay it's an open connected set okay so uh, if you use I mean if the relation is mutual that u is a harmonic conjugate of v and v is a harmonic conjugate of u, then it has to be that both of them are constants. Okay, so, this exercise brings out some asymmetry. So, you have to be careful about the definition. Okay, so, having said that let us do an example here. Okay, so, u of x y let me give you this polynomial into variables u of x y is x squared minus y squared okay, uh, and um, v of x y is 2 x y okay, are harmonic conjugates on the entire complex plane. Okay. So, uh, well that is uh, fairly clear because f of z if you take that to be z squared okay, which is in terms of x and y uh, x squared minus y squared plus 2 i x y. Okay. So, the real part of f of z is x squared minus y squared and the imaginary part of f of z is 2 x y. Okay. So, since u and v are the real and imaginary parts respectively of uh, this analytic function f of z equals z square an entire function. So, uh, they satisfy uh, the Laplace equation. So, both of them are harmonic okay. and not only that uh, u. Um, so, v is a harmonic conjugate uh, of u. Okay. So, uh, because u plus i v is an analytic function. Okay. So, uh, since u plus i v is the analytic function uh, z square okay, uh, u sorry v is the harmonic conjugate of u. Okay. So, v is the harmonic conjugate of u I should have said uh, 
So, I should have said in the exercise show that V is a harmonic conjugate of U on C. Okay? Sorry about that. So, the question should say show that V is a harmonic conjugate of U on C. Okay? So, let us see another example. show that uh, u of x y equals x y cube minus x cube y is a harmonic function that is easy okay? and find the harmonic conjugate of uh, u of x y. Okay. So, um, so, firstly it is easy to verify that u is a harmonic function, you just calculate uh, u x which is uh, y cube minus 3 x squared y. So, u x x the second order partial is minus 6 x y. Okay. U y the partial of u with respect to y is 3 x y squared minus x cube and so the second order partial of u with respect to y and again with respect to y is 6 x y. So, it is clear that u x x plus u y y is 0 uh, at every point x y. Okay. At any x y belonging to C. Okay. So, at any. So, with some abuse of notation I will just say belongs to C. So, that should actually be x plus i y belongs to C. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> now uh, you have to find an harmonic conjugate of u. Okay. So, a harmonic conjugate is a function which along with u satisfies the Cauchy Riemann equations. Okay. So, uh, we want a v such that, okay, so want v of x y such that the partial of v with respect to y okay, is equal to the partial of u with respect to x okay, and the partial of v with respect to uh, x is the negative of the partial of u with respect to y. Okay. So, let us look at, so this is equation 1, this is equation 2, okay, these are the Cauchy Riemann equations. So, let us look at 1, 1 implies that v y should look like, uh, v y should look like y cube minus 3 x squared y. Okay. And assuming that we are uh, working with a open connected region, okay. so so, v then in that case will be the partial integration of this function with respect to y. It is the integration of this function with respect to y and then there is possibly uh, a function of x alone. Okay? So, phi of x, let me call that function phi of x. So, that when you differentiate this equation partially with respect to y, you get back your v y in, in that form. Okay. So, so then v okay, uh, looks like y power 4 over 4 minus 3 x squared y squared over 2 plus possibly some function of phi of x which we have to determine. Okay. And to determine phi we will actually use the equation 2. So, from here from this equation we can calculate the partial of v with respect to x. So, we get minus uh, 3 x y square okay, plus phi prime of x. This is your partial of v with respect to x from this equation, but from the Cauchy Riemann equations or from 2 we know that this should be equal to uh, minus u y okay, which we have already calculated uh, or u y is right here. Okay. So, I am going to substitute minus u y will be 
minus 3 x y square plus x cube okay, from 2. So, using the Cauchy Riemann equations. Okay. So, then equating these two expressions, I get phi prime of x should look like x cube. Okay. So, and then uh, phi of x, uh, the candidate for phi of x is x raised to 4 by 4 okay, plus a constant c, constant of integration c. Okay. So, your v of x y equals y power 4 by 4 minus 3 x squared y squared by 2 plus x power 4 by 4 plus a constant okay, uh, is a harmonic conjugate of the given u of x y. Okay. So, we have used the Cauchy Riemann equations to arrive at the harmonic conjugate okay, on and this works on all of. So, let us do another example of this sort. So, here is another example uh, find an analytic function u plus i v okay, uh, given that v of x y is e power y sin x. Okay. So, in this case we have been given uh, the imaginary part of the analytic function, you have to find the real part. Okay. The procedure is pretty much similar, what we do is we consider the partial of v with respect to x okay, and uh, that is going to give us e power y cosine x okay, and consider the partial of uh, v with respect to y. Okay. So, that gives us e power y sin x back again okay. and uh, we will use the Cauchy Riemann equations. Uh, so, if u plus i v is analytic, then v x is uh, well uh, I should say u x is v y and v x is minus u y. Okay. So, using uh, using the Cauchy Riemann equations u x is e power y sin x okay. and uh, so partially integrating with respect to x uh, u uh, of x y should uh, now look like the integration of e power y sin x with respect to x okay, plus possibly a uh, function of y, okay, a function of y alone. Okay. So, uh, and uh, this works on all of uh, the complex plane okay. and since the complex plane is uh, open connected, I can, uh, I can do this, go from here to here. Okay. So, this gives me uh, an expression for u as e power y uh, negative cosine x because the integration of sin x is minus cosine x plus uh, possibly a function of y. Okay. And using this I will partially uh, differentiate u with respect to y to obtain minus e power y cosine x plus phi prime of y. Okay. And by the Cauchy Riemann equations, this should equal the negative of v x, which is e minus e power y cosine x. Okay. So, which is actually minus v x. Okay. So, comparing these two expressions, I conclude phi prime of y is 0 or phi of y is constant, a complex constant, rather a real constant. Okay. So, that gives us an expression of u of x y equals minus e power y cosine x plus a constant. So, uh, we can find uh, u like that and then u plus 
so minus e power y cosine x plus c plus i times uh, i times v e power y sin x okay, is the required analytic function. Okay. Notice that I use the definite article the required analytic function, but actually there is ambiguity due to this uh, constant c. Okay. So, uh, it should technically say uh, is a required analytic function. Okay. So, this you can take any value of c and that will satisfy the requirement. Okay. So, uh, next let us see uh, a context in which these uh, we have connected uh, the harmonic functions uh, to analytic functions okay, via the Cauchy Riemann equations. And um, let us see where these harmonic functions are applied at least uh, okay, or at least one application of it. Okay. So, in the context of uh, fluid flows, okay, so let us consider the application fluid flows. So, uh, if you uh, imagine a fluid flowing through some, okay, some, some channel. Okay. So, these, these arrows represent uh, velocity at each point. Okay. So, Since I cannot draw arrow technically at every point which I see there, okay. So these arrows are just indicative of uh, velocities, okay. And uh, so the velocity vector, okay. So the velocity at a point x comma y, okay. So I see uh, a plane here. So let me imagine a plane here. The x plane and the y plane. Okay. So, then I can coordinateize any of these points here, okay, any of these points here as x comma y. Okay. And uh, let us imagine that a fluid is uh, flowing through uh, a certain uh, channel okay. and we have an assortment of these x y planes okay, stacked up. Okay. And so, uh, let us also assume that the fluid flow uh, on one of these planes looks exactly the same as the fluid flow on, on a plane parallel to it. Okay. So, here I have a stack of these x y planes as is shown okay. and uh, at each point x y uh, I am able to uh, suppose write the velocity as a function p of x y plus i times q of x y where I am pretending that uh, I am in the complex plane okay. and the velocity function is p of x y plus i times q of x y put a little bar to indicate uh, velocity. Okay. So, let this be uh, the velocity function okay, at a point x comma y. Okay. So, the velocity is a vector okay. and uh, so, v is actually a function from the plane okay, to C okay, and I am interpreting points in the complex plane as uh, vectors. Okay. So, uh, right you, you remember how we can interpret a point in the complex plane as a vector, you just join uh, the origin to any given point x comma y okay, and that becomes a vector. So, in this case p of x y plus i times q of x y okay, uh, is that. So, this is the image of the point x y. Okay, so, recall that and so, v is a function from the plane which we can once again pretend is a complex plane to the complex plane. Okay. And um, so, assume uh, incompressible Okay, and frictionless fluid flow 
uh, over uh, the complex plane. Okay, with the above velocity function. Okay, so further assume that. Uh, the fluid flow is irrotational and has no sources or sinks. Okay, so, this appears in uh, fluid mechanics. Uh, so, I cannot uh, explain these terms in great detail, but at least let me tell you that irrotational just means that uh, uh, the the flow is not uh, you know circulating around a point okay or there are no sources or sinks means that uh, the fluid is not generated at a point nor does it get absorbed uh, at any point x comma y okay so what that translates to in terms of uh, uh, of this uh, vector valued function is that uh, the curl of the vector function v bar uh, and the gra or sorry the the divergence so the irrotational uh, component says that the curl is zero okay and the divergence says and the, and the uh, no sources or sinks says that the divergence of v bar is zero okay so uh, we can calculate the divergence and curl of these and equate them to zero Okay. So, the, div, uh, the curl is uh, the del cross, you will recall del, okay. del bar is the vector dou by dou x i hat plus dou by dou y j hat plus dou by dou z k hat. Okay. And since we are just in the plane, I can conveniently ignore this. Well, uh, or I will just say that is the vector del bar. Okay. So, we can calculate del bar cross curl of v bar is del bar cross uh, v bar okay. and likewise uh, the divergence recall divergence is this vector del okay, the symbolic vector del dot v bar. Okay. So, these are expressions which help us uh, how, help us to calculate the curl and uh, the divergence. Okay. So, these lead us to the following equations, these imply that uh, q x minus p y like that is 0 and uh, p x plus q y is 0. Okay. So, the curl is 0 gives us this equation and the divergence is 0 gives us this equation. Okay. So, uh, p y or rather p x is equal to minus q y and p y is equal to q x. Okay. So, if I take the function uh, minus q, okay, then uh, we see that p and minus q, we see that these are the C R equations okay, for, uh, for f of uh, z equals p of x y minus i times q of x y. Okay. Uh, so, since p and minus q satisfy the C R equations, f is analytic. Okay. So, I am further assuming that p and q uh, are differentiable uh, or um, their further partials exist and uh, the partial derivatives of p and q are continuous. So, that I can make this conclusion, that conclusion needs the hypothesis that p x q y p y q x are all continuous. Okay. So, I will assume the continuity, so that I get f is an analytic function with p as the uh, real part and q minus q as the imaginary part. Okay. So, then v is actually now the conjugate of f of z, okay, right, because it is p plus i q. So, v is the conjugate of f. So, now, uh, 
uh, f is analytic okay so we will see uh, further in the course that since f is analytic okay uh, it has an analytic anti derivative when restricted to appropriate uh, domain okay so uh, so we have uh, an analytic anti derivative let us assume uh, that is uh, capital f of z okay so f prime there exists okay there is uh, an f of z such that f prime of z is equal to f of z okay on on that c okay so um, now you let f of z equals phi of x y plus i times psi of x y okay and capital f is analytic so uh, here phi okay and of course psi are harmonic functions okay and after some simple calculations we can actually see that the gradient of uh, phi okay well let us calculate it A gradient of phi is uh, phi x of x y plus i times phi y of x y okay and by the cauchy riemann equations uh, uh, phi y of x y is actually minus psi x of x y here equations okay so we get all in all f prime of z is uh, phi x plus i times psi x one way to calculate the derivative of f capital f so this gives us uh, the gradient of phi conjugate because i have a negative here i get a gradient of phi conjugate okay so but this is f of z conjugate which is v of uh, rather this is uh, f prime of z is f of z so this is v of z conjugate so we conclude that v of x plus x comma y okay is actually uh, the gradient of a harmonic function phi okay phi so um, the velocity function is can be interpreted as the gradient of a uh, harmonic function and this function is called the uh, potential function phi is called the potential function okay and there are interesting properties of uh, this potential function uh, and one can study further properties in a fluid mechanics course so let's see a quick example here so uh, show that uh, the harmonic function phi of xy equals x cube minus 3xy squared is the scalar uh, potential function okay for the fluid flow uh, expression v of x y is 3x squared minus 3y squared minus 6ixy okay so uh, v okay is v of xy when we take its conjugate uh, we realize uh, that looks like 3z squared okay so the conjugate of v of xy is 3x squared minus 3y squared plus 6ixy which is 3 times 
x squared minus y squared plus 2 i x y which is uh, 3 z squared and which is an analytic entire function. Okay, It is an entire function. Uh, so, let us call this f of z. Okay. So, uh, capital F of z is the antiderivative of this analytic function, uh, which is z cube, okay. z cube the antiderivative of 3 z squared and it, and it works on all of c. Okay. So, uh, the real part phi of x y okay, of this analytic function capital F of z is indeed x cube minus 3 x y squared. Okay, that can be uh, done by expanding z cube x plus i y cube. This is x cube uh, plus 3 x squared i y plus 3 times x i y squared plus i y cube. So, which gives us x cube among other things x cube minus 3 x y squared for the real part. Okay, and then the imaginary part I won't work it out. So you get uh, this. Okay, so uh, so indeed the real part of this analytic function uh, is x cube minus three x y squared, and it is harmonic function because it's a real part of an analytic function, and uh, uh, and that gives you uh, the required phi for this velocity function v of x y.